What's going on guys, Alton Anastasio here with FlightPath.com and I'm here at the Autel Robotics booth at CES 2022, mainly because of these two new drones right here. This is the latest from Autel. We have the Autel Lite, kind of comparable, if you're thinking about DJI, kind of comparable to something like the Air 2, Air 2S. And then we have this one right here, which a lot of people have been waiting for, the new Nano from Autel, which would be comparable to the DJI Mini, because it is under that 250 gram mark. The one thing I do like about these new drones is that they do have some different colorways, so it's not just the standard orange that Autel is kind of known for, which I kind of like because it's just like a staple color for them. Autel also has the Dragonfish series and a bunch of other drones here, some of the Enterprise stuff that's attached to the Autel Evo 2. Now, of course, I want to get these two in my hand to do some full testing and compare them to some of the other drones on the market. But I'm here at CES and they have a couple of flying booths. And what I'm going to do is actually have John McBride walk you through all the new stuff that Autel has here for CES 2022. Hey, I'm John McBride with Autel Robotics. What I do here specifically is the director of training. So I do all of the training on, on the uh, bigger stuff, the smaller stuff, all of the things that we kind of run with Autel. So that's my primary goal here. But what we really want to talk about is we're here at CES. We have done a really great job overall doing the Evo 2 line. And the Evo 1 even was a great product line that, that allowed us to do a lot of fun things with it. When we moved into the Evo 2 though, there's always the ability to try and get a smaller foldable drone. And that's kind of the general idea is to try and get something that's small, can fold. And that the purpose of this is to, to make it quick, easy, simple, deployable, all of those things. We have so many things on the Evo 2 with different payloads that we have allowed on here. So we've got thermal camera capability. We have the 6K, the 8K, all of these neat things. Plus we have RTK. And even looking at some of the enterprise product lines, we've allowed you know accessories to be put on top of these so that you can use them for special use case uh, scenarios and public safety, search and rescue, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, overall, I think that the Evo 2 and, and using this uh, kind of flight tech and as well as the designs then moves into the newer stuff. So let's talk a little bit about some of the new stuff. Uh, it, this was announced way back in October that we were going to have a light and a nano version of the Evo 2, of the Evo series. And of course that created a whole lot of people getting excited about a product that was smaller even than that and still a very powerful package of sensors as well as capability with video stream and everything else. And in comparison to the Evo 2, just a little bit smaller, but we have these awesome carbon fiber arms. We have a, a uh, sensor on here that's doing uh, RYYB, so not RGB. What does this mean? Much better in low light conditions. So a lot of people ask for the, the ability to do night, night stuff, and so we have a, a new version of sensor that kind of allows us to do a little bit better dark lit areas. And I think that's a really um, a tribute to the, uh, what the needs are that people keep asking about. Out of the two light versions, we have the light and the light plus. A Little bit different on the sensor packages, but not much different. The one thing is, is on the light plus is having that 6K one inch sensor that has been installed on this. Some people have been a little concerned that this might cannibalize the actual EVO 2 line, but remember that the EVO 2 has its own special capabilities, and this will have its own special capabilities. But that sensor is, is identical to that of the EVO 2, a little bit smaller, a little bit better flight time on that. It also has a 16x zoom on, the, on, this, uh, on that system. The one thing about the light, just the standard light though, it's still a very good camera and sensor, but because again, we're throwing in a couple more added additions to it. No flight, flight time is still identical between the two. We have a lot of good, good numbers there that, that people are capable of understanding that if you buy one versus the other, everybody wants the plus, but you're still gonna have a great product on the standard light. I think one of the funnest things about the Nano is just the, again, the physical size. We stay underneath that 250 gram for those that, that are gonna do recreational flying. One thing that's really awesome about such a small micro-sized drone is the obstacle avoidance capability front and back. We also have optical flow capability that in comparison to other drones that are out there in this size, there's nothing like it. So the Nano Plus does have a little bit better camera versus the other. Flight time is still very, very similar between the two, but I think you'll either one of these are gonna be great choices for doing smaller 
type missions as well as uh, the ability to do public safety missions. All right, so one of the very impressive piece of products that I, or the, the product that basically Autel made and kind of moved me from where I used to be at Arm US is the Dragonfish. I can tell you that it's very hard to impress this guy, very hard to impress John McBride with a product that is a VTOL that can handle what these things, I've, I've put these things through so far. We have a number of these out in the United States being flown right now by primarily public safety. It's not really set up to do major mapping, but overall the Dragonfish line has this capability of being a VTOL, and that's a very important to uh, most missions that don't have the area or space to run a runway. Having the propulsion to put it up in the air, and then these rotating and turning just slightly to get it off the ground, and then going forward to then do the main propulsion. Right in the middle here, these then electronically lock straight forward so that these don't free turn or move during operation. This keeps that little bit of the uh, flight char characteristics to maintain it like an airplane. This then pushes our flight time upwards of 75 minutes on the small one. So we've got almost two hours on the Pro, so that's our next one, come on down. And between the sensors here, we have zoomable cameras locking onto an, an item and watching it very clearly. We have that ability. So either one of these uh, are good choices as far as public safety. But now let's talk about the big dog. Pushes a flight time of around three hours. And with that operational time and distance, we're also able to push this thing out almost 100 miles. 100 miles. This isn't going to be something that we're going to be communicating back and forth with just the standard remote here. We're gonna be running that through a ground station and as well, you can then bounce information off of each other if you have more than one. Most of the time, we're, we're always talking about a 640 thermal sensor, right? And 640 is kind of the standard now. Everybody asks for a 640, but on this, we're talking a 50 times optical zoom with a 1280 thermal sensor. And then a, uh, a wide camera as well as a laser range finder. What's the purpose of the laser rangefinder? Better accuracy on a position where this is looking to know exactly where that GPS point is. But for the smaller stuff, we also have another 1280. This one primarily for thermal here. So one of the big things is when are these gonna be available? They're so cool and so awesome that everyone's been so excited about them. One thing is always making sure every manufacturer, all manufacturers make sure that the products themselves are ready for the stage. And so it has taken a little bit of time to get these things ready to go, as well as flight parameters working well, the production of them going well. So I know everyone's been so excited for this. We should be expecting these in mid-January to start shipping out to dealers. So that's the expectation. Late January for a lot of others, but this first initial release that came out was kind of to get out to the, the influencers and a couple of the dealers to get some ideas and get feedback because we really, really, really value the feedback on any of the, the products that uh, Autel puts out. So we should be expecting them here by the end of January, mid-January, end of January to get out to the dealers and be available in the stores and ready to go to be sold. One of the other things is that as a resource, you can always go to autelrobotics.com and uh, get, get the ability to uh, get some information there, a little bit more information. So autorobotics.com, and we're super excited about CES 2022 and being here. Uh, it's been challenging overall with the COVID and everything else, but being uh, one of the, the major drone players here at CES has also been a, a super gratifying thing that we were able to come out here and make this happen for everybody else and get this ready to go. Thanks again for having me and uh, talking about this today.